a boat lies adrift on a becalmed infinite ocean. And where's our hero? Dr. Atkinson. There he is, next to one mole of an ionic compound. Now there are two ways to dissolve that into water. The first way is to break the lattice up into its constituent gaseous ions. Now that's called delta H lattice, or the change in energy of the lattice. And that's defined as the energy change when one mole of an ionic compound is split up into its gaseous ions. Now that's going to take a long time, so let's zoom forward. Now these ions are supposed to be spaced out infinitely, but the IB doesn't really care about that part of the definition. Then you throw the ions into an infinite amount of water. That's called delta H hydration, or the energy change of hydration. And that's defined as the energy change when one mole of ions, in their gaseous form, are dissolved in an infinite amount of water. Now remember I said there are two ways to dissolve an ionic compound in water. The second way is to just throw it into the water and let it dissolve. And that's called delta H solution. That's the energy change when one mole of an ionic compound is dissolved in an infinite amount of water. So let's look at some definitions first off. Let's look at the energy change of solution. Well, that's defined as the energy change when one mole of an ionic compound dissolves in water to infinite dilution. So that is zero moles per decimeter cubed. And the equation there is for sodium chloride. Next up, the energy change of hydration. That's the energy change when one mole of gaseous ions dissolve to give an infinitely dilute solution. Now note that that equation includes the heat of hydration for the sodium ions and the chloride ions. There's two heats of hydration there. And finally, the lattice energy. That's the energy change when one mole of an ionic compound is broken up into its constituent gaseous ions. You don't need to say infinitely spaced. And there's the equation for sodium chloride's lattice energy there. So let me rearrange all these symbols to try and make this energy cycle that you need to know. OK, so if you turn the solid ionic lattice into gaseous ions, that is called delta H lattice. And if you turn the solid ionic compound into the aqueous ions, that is called delta H solution. And if you turn the gaseous ions into the aqueous ions, that is called delta H hydration. Now, I always think there should be infinite water here, but I don't see that in any of the textbooks, so you can probably just ignore that. So if you remember Hess's law, the pathway is independent. Doesn't matter which path you take, the energy change will be the same. So let me just annotate this properly. So using Hess's law, the delta H of the solution equals the sum of the other two delta H's. So I have the numbers for the lattice and the hydration energies. So let me just write those in. Now if I sum those together, that will give me the delta H for the solution. Another way to think of it is clockwise arrows equal anti-clockwise arrows. And so the delta H for the solution is negative 43, that's kilojoules per mole, that's exothermic. So when you dissolve sodium hydroxide in water, it's going to feel warm. It's an exothermic reaction, and that is indeed the case. Now the lattice energy may be reported as positive or negative, depending on your source. And so you've got to make sure it's positive in this scenario, or it doesn't work. And the clockwise arrows add up to the anti-clockwise arrows. All right, here's another question. So follow the format of the cycle that I showed you before. And let's plunge into the data booklet and other places to find out the numbers. You hate doing it, I hate doing it, jeez. So the two yellow arrows equal the blue arrow. Anti-clockwise equals clockwise.
So the lattice is given, it's plus 705. Looking in the data booklet, I can see delta H solution for ammonium. Oh, you know what? I wish the Terminator would come back in time and save me from chemistry. I wish I'd been a rock guard or something like that, a guitarist. Oh, back to the chemistry. And so I had the delta H solution for ammonium chloride. Pop that in there. Back to the data booklet. I have the chloride iron delta H hydration. Pop that in. And now I just have to rearrange to find delta H hydration for the ammonium iron. Gives me minus 331 kilojoules per mole. I don't have enough room to write out the units all the way through on this board. I have no idea if that feels right or not. So let me check the left-hand column here of the other cations. Yeah, that sounds like a possible answer. All right, and finally, looking at these four equations, can you identify if they're hydration, solution, or lattice energies? And if you see this theta sign anywhere in the equations, that stands in for STP, standard conditions.